This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. How to Tell the Birds from the Flowers, a Manual of Flornithology for Beginners. Verses and Illustrations by Robert Williams Wood. The Bird and the Burdock. Who is there who has never heard about the burdock and the bird? And yet how very, very few discriminate between the two. While well, even Mr. Burbank can't transform a bird into a plant. The clover, the plover. The plover and the clover can be told apart with ease by paying close attention to the habits of the bees. For entomologists aver the bee can be in clover, while etymologists concur there is no bee in plover. The crow, the crocus. Some are unable, as you know, to tell the crocus from the crow. The reason why is just because they are not versed in nature's laws. The noisy cawing crows all come, obedient to the crow custom. A large crow caucus to convoke, you never hear the crocus croak. The roo, the rooster. Of rooster, the rudiment purely as roo, and the bird from the plant very probably grew. You can easily tell them apart without fail, by merely observing the rulux detail. The parrot, the carrot. The parrot and the carrot we may easily confound. They are very much alike in looks and similar in sound. We recognize the parrot by his clear articulation, for carrots are unable to engage in conversation. The pea, the peewee. To tell the peewee from the pea requires great perspicacity. Here in the pod we see the pea, while perched close by is the peewee. The pea he hears the peewee peep, while peewee sees the wee pea weep. There will be but little time to see how peewee differs from the pea. The pelican, the panicle. The panicle and pelican have often been confused. The letters which spell pelican and panicle are used. You never need confound the two, there are many ways of telling. The simplest thing that one can do is to observe the spelling. The hen, the lichen. The lichens lie on rocks and bark. They look somewhat like hens. Hence lay, they lie, we may remark, a difference of tense. The hawk, the hollyhock. To recognize this bird of prey, the broody hen you should survey. She takes her chicks on daily walks among the neighboring hollyhocks, while with the hawk association is quite beyond her toleration. The cowbird, the cowslip, growing in mires and gold attired, the cowslip has been much admired. Although its proper name, we're told, is really the marsh marigold. The cowbird picture, I suspect, is absolutely incorrect. We make such errors now and then, a sort of cowslip of the pen. A sparrow, asparagus. The sparrow, from flying, is quite out of breath. In fact, he has worked himself almost to death. While the lazy asparagus, so it is said, spends all of his time in the asparagus bed. The tern, the turnip. To tell the turnip from the tern, a thing which everyone should learn, observe the turnip in the air. See how he turns, and now compare. Him with this inert vegetable, who does to turn is quite unable, for he is rooted to the spot, while as we see, the turn is not. He is not always doomed to be, this bound to earth eternally, for cooked to a turn may be inferred, to change the turnip to the bird. Observe the turnip in the pot, the turn is glad that he is not. The old gander, the oleander. The gander loves to promenade around the farmer's poultry yard, while as we see, the oleander is quite unable to meander. The blue mountain lorry, the blue morning glory. The blue mountain lorry spends most of his time in climbing about in a tropical clime. We therefore our efforts need only confine to minutely observing the climb of the vine. The quail, the kale. The California quail is said to have a tail upon his head. While contrary wise we style the kale a cabbage head upon a tail. 
it is not hard to tell the two. The quail commences with a Q. The pecan, the toucan. Very few can tell the toucan from the pecan. Here's a new plan. To take the toucan from the tree requires immense agility. While well, anyone can pick with ease, the pecans from the pecan trees. It's such an easy thing to do that even the toucan he can too. The oak, the orchid. We seldom meet when out to walk, either the orchid or the oak. The oak indeed is only known to dwellers in the arctic zone. While orchids can be found in legions within the equatorial regions, the graceful orchid on its stalk resembles so the awkward oak. Tis plain we must some means discover to tell the two from one another. The obvious difference, to be sure, is merely one of temperature. For Eskimos, perhaps the oak performs the duties of the stork. The catbird, the catnip. The catbird's call resembles that emitted by the pussycat, while catnip growing by the wall is never known to caterwaul. Its odor, though, attracts the kits and throws them in catnipshin fits. The ibis, the ibiscus. The sacred ibis tells his beads and gravely from his prayer book reads. The ibis, therefore, we may say, is classified a bird of prey. Ibiscus we have heard related, the crimson eye is designated. Their difference is plain indeed, the flower is red, the bird can read. The butterball, the buttercup. The little buttercup can sing, from morn till night like anything. The cracking of the butterball cannot be called a song at all. We this the flower may learn to know, its song is reproduced below. The bay, the jay, the blue jay as we plainly see, resembles much the green bay tree. The difference between the two is obviously one of you, though this is not the only way to tell the blue jay from the bay. The pipe, the snipe. Observe the common Indian pipe, likewise the hybrid English snipe, who is distinguished as we see by his superior pedigree. The rock, the shamrock. Observe how peacefully the cows among the little shamrocks browse. In contrast with their actions frantic, when they perceive the rock gigantic, we need but watch their occupation and seek no other explanation. The lark, the larkspur. The larkspur's likeness to the lark is surely worthy of remark, although to see it we require the aid of a small magnifier, which circumstance of course implies their difference is one of size. Puffin, nothing. Upon this cake of ice is perched the paddle-footed puffin. To find his double we have searched, but have discovered nothing. Author's Apology Not everyone is always able to recognize a vegetable, for some are guided by tradition, while others use their intuition. And even I make no pretense of having more than common sense. Indeed, these strange homologies are in most flornithologies, and I have freely drawn upon the works of Gray and Audubon, avoiding though the frequent blunders of those who study nature's wonders. End of How to Tell the Birds from the Flowers by Robert Williams Wood